YouTube vinyl community, Beach Boys fans, random people on the internet, my name is Giggins. We are here today for another album review. This time, the Beach Boys, <laughs> Best of the Beach Boys, Volume 3. And uh, before you say, hey man, what the hell? Why another Greatest Hits album? What's the point? Well, I just have to say that each time I review an album, there's certainly a point behind it, and a reason why I'm doing it, and a reason that I think this deserves its own video. Um, besides it being an absolute abomination of the Beach Boys' career, uh, and coming out in one of the worst times of their career, I think it's a fascinating aspect because this version in the US and the other version from the UK are completely different from each other and showcase different aspects of, uh, of this band and how their record label thought things that set the Beach Boys on them would sell. Let's get into it. 1968. This thing comes out. This is the third... <laughs> oh, God. It's the third part of the Beach Boys' greatest hits releases in two years. Uh, in short, if you're following along on the Beach Boys' story so far, their career by 1968 was steadily going downhill fast in America. In England and around the world, they were kicking ass. I mean, they were selling out places, their records were doing insanely well, and their momentum was continuing to build everywhere besides their own home country, which was a definite drag and confusing. Uh, <laughs> it was enough to make you say the word confusing wrong. It was confusing for Capital to think about how to sell these guys. Because they were out of style. They weren't cool anymore, man. You know, it was... People still saw them as surf music, and Smile never came out. They didn't play the Monterey Pop Festival. The Friends album was one of their lowest selling albums at this point. They had to cancel shows because ticket sales were low. These guys could not catch a break. The Capitol even went so far as to put out the Stack O' Tracks album, which was just instrumental backing tracks of their songs. The things that the Beach Boys are known for, their vocals, absent from an album. Mind blowing. And uh, they try to package that with, like, chords and words so you can sing along and play along and make it this interactive experience. But I think the last thing people wanted in 1968 was to sing old Beach Boy songs. As sad as that is to say. Anyways, you know, after Pet Sounds came out, Capital was scared because they're like, well, hey, these guys are doing different types of music now. We're not sure what's going to sell. Quick, put out a Greatest Hits album. Best of the Beach Boys, Greatest Hits, came, uh, Best of the Beach Boys Volume 1 came out did really well in the charts. Um, and I, th I think it actually peaked higher on the charts than Pet Sounds did. Could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure it did. Um, volume 2 came out a year later, and then this came out in 1968 as Volume 3. Also the last time there was a volume number attached to it before, um, I think the end of the summer came out. Oh man, let's just get into this. The track listings on these albums are terrible. The sequencing is awful. It literally is like someone had a wheel with Beach Boy songs on it, spun it, closed their eyes, whatever the thing landed on was the song that got picked and put on the album and they had pumped it out and hoped it would sell. That's it. No care, no consideration. These album style covers were pretty popular at that time. They were, they were greatest hits for a bunch of people at this time that had this sort of same style, the same aesthetic, same font, all that stuff. This is the American version. In America, it was a gatefold. Sorry, my copy's a little, little toasty. Um, this, that's pretty cool. I do like that. Uh, on the inside, just shows the albums that you can buy that no one was buying. And um, it mentions Brian, Dennis, Carl, Mike, and Al. Where's Bruce? He's not anywhere to be seen on any of these pictures. He was totally a band member. Strike one. Strike one, Capital. Strike one. Um... <laughs> ah! The sequencing and the song choices. Let me let me just let me unfold this for you guys, alright? Side two. Side two opens up with surfing. The first song they ever did. Surfing. Alright? The second song is Heroes and Villains. Need I say more? <laughs> uh oh, and by the way, on side one, Frosty the Snowman is on here. Not what? Like, it goes, it opens with God Only Knows. Okay, that's cool. Great song. Goes into Dance, 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 and it's a bit of a stretch, 409, mm, okay. Little Girl I Once Knew, 
that's cool because it was a single, so that this was the first time it was ever on an album. Um, that helps. But then it jumps into Frosty the Snowman and then Girl Don't Tell Me, which I love Girl Don't Tell Me, but it's kind of like ending on a thud or something. Um, and then side two, Surfing, Heroes and Villains, She Knows Me Too Well, which is strange, Darling, and then Good Vibrations, which is the third time it was on an album. Or, wait a minute, hang on, nope. It was on, it was a single, then it was Smiley Smile, then it was this. So it was the second time it was on an album, hoping it would sell. That's the American version. Uh, here's the label. It was just your standard, your standard capital of the time, rainbow label. Now, in England, in England, people, the Beach Boys were blowing up over there. I mean, they could do no wrong. Pet Sounds came out, and they were on top of the world, and they were just taken over. The audiences overseas were eating them up. They were selling out. They were doing great. Their albums were selling really well. Um, they just they just kept going back over there because the demand was so high. And so when Volume 3 came out in England, it was released not as a gatefold, um, but it had the foldbacks, like the British albums of the time. Same cover, a little short on the bottom. And uh, EMI added to the top. And I'll show you the label while we're at it. It was the green, late 60s green capital logo. Capital, the C logo as they call it. And this album, this particular track listing, is way better. Way better. It actually makes more sense. There's only one misstep on this whole track listing here. It opens with Do It Again, Warmth of the Sun, uh, 409, Catch a Wave, Lonely Sea, which, that's pretty cool. Long Tall Texan is the only song on here I'm like, mm, about. And it ends with Wild Honey, so those two are kind of a jarring experience uh, next to each other. But then side two, it's fantastic. Darling, please let me wander. Let him run wild. Country air. I know there's an answer. Friends, heroes, and villains. So this goes right up to their, right from the beginning with 409, right up to the newest album with Friends. Um, it, this album is a, is a pretty good listening experience. This track listing seems like it makes sense. It seems like some care was put into it. Um... The only misstep, like I said, is Long Tall Texas with Wild Honey next to it. That's a little bit jarring. Um, but overall, not a bad listen. Not a bad run. Pretty good. Pretty good. This album, uh, it's just, it's so funny to think about the Beach Boys not selling. That there actually was a time when Capitol Records couldn't sell Beach Boys product. Um, I mean, these days, every time they release anything with the Beach Boys name on it, people freak out, and it's this giant thing, like, you know, the Smile Sessions, or, you know, the new Made in California box set, or Pet Sounds 50th Anniversary Edition, like, music that is so timeless, and it has this giant market for it. And it's like, people just disappeared in the 60s with this stuff, in America anyway, and, and everywhere else they ate it up, but... Over here in the States, you couldn't give the Beach Boys away. And it really seemed like Capitol did not care. And this is only a year before everything went down between Beach Boys and Capitol Records. And it got really messy really fast. Um, resulting in the guys suing Capitol, leaving them, and just having a really, really hard relationship with them for a long time after that. <sighs> this album... I gotta give it two ratings. The American version. Oof. I mean, it's got some. It's got the little girl I once knew. She knows me too well. Girl, don't tell me. Those are cool songs. But it's also got Frosty the Snowman, and the track listing makes absolutely no sense. And the fact that both of these just have stock covers that anyone in the AR department probably just threw together and said, "Well, I'm done." You know, time for lunch. Um, <laughs> I can't even give this like an actual review because it's so freaking funny to me that like these two things exist and they're completely different and uh, I'm at a loss for words on this one, people. U.S. version out of a 10. Ooh, I'm going to give this like a 4.
British version out of a 10, I'm gonna give this probably a 7. I like a 7. That's generous. Oh man, this, uh, this was, this was a hard one to do. I've wanted to do this one for a while, but I feel like it's warranted. I feel like it's, uh, worth checking out. I think if you guys can find copies of these albums, give them a listen. Figure it out for yourself if you like the track listing, the sequencing, the mixes, all of that. Is it a headache? Do you enjoy it? Do you like hearing 4 or 9 and surfing right next to Heroes and Villains? Does that make sense to you? Does it not make sense to you? That's it. I, it's out of my, it's out of my brain. It's, it's on the internet now. I can, I can relax and sleep tonight and uh, feel like I did something with my life today. Beach Boys, Best of the Beach Boys, Volume Three. This has been Album Reviews with Giggins. Thank you so much for watching. I promise there's more videos coming. I have like 10 or 11 lined up that I want to do. They're coming. Thank you so much for watching. Best of the Beach Boys. That's all I got to say about that one.